So I recently received this comment that I'm going to read because I didn't memorize it. It was based on a sermon that I gave last week. This is from a YouTuber, and it goes something like this. I enjoyed this until you condemned Christians for celebrating certain days. I think Jesus is more concerned with us repenting and drawing closer to Him rather than what days we worship Him on. So what I find interesting about that comment is, first, I didn't make any criticisms. Uh, when I get up to speak, the thing that's on my mind and what I pray about uh, very often with tears before I have the opportunity to get up and to speak on God's behalf is that He speak, and most importantly, that I don't get in the way. Now, it is true that some of the things that Jesus says are, are hard. They're hard for us to hear, and we don't want to hear them. But if we don't like it, it's not the person whose mouth the words are coming through. If I read Jesus' words from the Bible, then He's saying what He expects, what He demands. He's declaring what is good and what is evil. So if we ever have an argument with that, our argument's not with a person, any more than if you read the Bible that you would take uh, offense that it's written on onion skin paper or that the ink is black. You don't argue with ink and paper. If you don't like what's being said, it's the Lord that you're accepting or rejecting. And the follow-on part of the comment, I think, is also telling because it says, I think Jesus is more concerned with, well, how do you find out what Jesus is concerned with? If Jesus himself says, I'm concerned with these things, and you say, well, I don't think Jesus is concerned about these things, well, where did you find that? I mean, do you just have some knowledge outside the Bible about what Jesus likes or doesn't like? Or is the Bible, in fact, true? I think we all have to address that. But just to be plain, it's, it's the Lord's desire for every person to be saved. That's what He wants. That's what He came here for. Uh, and for that reason, He will not back up from telling the truth. He's interested in giving you the truth that you need in order to repent from sin and to receive Him, to be baptized, and to live for Him faithfully for the rest of your days, and at the end of which you will receive eternal life, you will receive glory, you will receive joy, unspeakable pleasures evermore. Uh, it's, a, it's a future so wonderful that no sacrifice that we make now uh, would be too great. Uh, in fact, nothing will ever match the sacrifice that He's already made to offer that to us. But make no mistake, if we choose to be disobedient to Him, if we choose to stop up our ears, then you can't receive Him, which means that you'll be stuck in your sin because there's no other, there's no other way for our sins to be washed away. There's no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. There is no other provision made for us to escape the wrath that is rightly going to fall on Satan and on sin. So uh, just to sum up, and this was supposed to be short, but those of you who know me know this is my version of short. It's a very dangerous thing to take exception to what Jesus said. And I'll just quote him back. Blessed is he who is not offended in me. 